and there's my snow leopard, and there's my Windows 7, okay? And then, so remember before we had changed some of the settings in the, uh, in the ETC uh, default grub file, we changed the default timeout setting, and we changed the default operating system. Because of that, and we've enumerated any new operating systems we may have added. Remember, whenever you modify grub 2's configuration files, you must compile the changes into boot grub grub cfg with the command update grub. Um, anytime I modify those files and things, I need to basically do the equivalent of make file. But grub 2 style, that would be sudo, and I need to do update grub. So sudo update grub and notice that it says generating the grub config file so it's going to write all of this, it'll collect all of the information that's changed in any of the scripts I modified or edited any of the things that you know have, have been updated and it'll put them into the grub cfg file in the you know forward slash boot forward slash grub folder and again you, although you could edit this file directly you're not supposed to though you, you know Rather, you should edit the, the files in the you know, etc grub.d subdirectory or in the etc default uh, grub file. Okay, so let's, let's give it a test. Um, you know, that being done, okay, and back at the boot menu, now notice that the default operating system that's highlighted is Windows 7 whereas before it was Ubuntu. And again, I'll just go over those index values. If I were to look at the default setting, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, respectively. So if you take a look at your boot menu, if you're doing a multi-boot or triple boot, um, or even a crazy quadruple boot, you can figure out how to set the default operating system and partition based on the order that they appear in you know, the Grub2 boot menu. Once again, taking a look at the configuration file, this is the default operating system on a multi-boot system that will be selected, uh, you know, first or by default if the user doesn't change it or do anything. So remember, we changed that from Ubuntu to Windows 7. Now I'm going to change it back to Ubuntu. Um, another thing that you can do if you add uh, this entry, grub, and save default, then it will simply pick um, the last, let me do, pull up the extra D there, it will simply pick the last um, operating system that the user selected when they booted up off that menu, if it's set to true. So that way, you know, um, without having to modify the configuration file, you could temporarily make it boot into Ubuntu or Windows 7 or you know, uh, Snow Leopard, if there were some tasks or things that you had to do repetitively that involved rebooting those things. So that's kind of a nice option that we could add there. Um, grub save default, but I'm going to stick with the default configuration file because that's not in there, um, you know, at least in this section by default. But if you want to add it, yes, that's up to you. Um, the timeout, I'm going to change it to 20 seconds. It was 10, we made it 30, now I'm going to decrease it back to uh, 20. Um, now the, the distributor, um, that's, you know, in this case, the, what will be displayed, um, the descriptive name in the menu entry. And in this case, it's just going to be Debian. It's just echoing Debian. Um, now the next one, um, Quiet Splash. Um, for a black screen with boot presses is displayed in text, we could remove this. Okay, and um, if that's what we wanted, um, to see the Grub Splash image and plus condensed uh, text output, I could just use Splash, all right, instead of Quiet Splash, and we'll modify that. We're just going to make that Splash. Um, and then also, you know, like for instance, when I was setting up my, my Everex laptop with Ubuntu, I had to turn off um, uh, ACPI and... Uh, the card reader and a couple of other options. It was an old Everex laptop, so that I could pass those options in if I needed to. I'm just trying to get our, ourselves familiar with, um, 
you know, Grub 2. What are the changes? What's new? How, what, you know, what's the structure? Where are the configuration files and how do they link together? So now I'm looking at the, you know, this file is written by all of the other script files that we look, have looked at previously. Okay, and that's when we use the command update grub. So all that information gets compiled into this file. So here you have the color scheme, and if I go down here, here's the memory test menu option, and there's the kernel, and what's being displayed there. Um, and then if I keep going down, notice here's a menu entry. And this is, you know, from that configuration file, 30 OS Prober, it added OS 10, 32 bit. As, as a menu entry. And then again it adds OS 10 64 bit as a menu entry. And I'll scroll down some more and now down here it adds Windows 7 as a menu entry. And I, I could create uh, splash images. In this case I set it up to use a default. There's also sort of a default package out there that you can install with Grub2 splash images. So I'm just going to app get that right now. sudo app get install and grub2 splash images. Okay, and now that that's installed by default, I'm going to use Nautilus real quick. I'm just try to view some of these images. But they would be located by default with that package installed um, in the directory user and share and images and grub. Okay. And again, you know, we'll just kind of cycle through some of these in image viewer. So these are just some of the, the grub menu, you know, bootloader graphics that you can put on your your grub2 menu. I'm going to go with this one, Moraine Lake. And in order to do that, I need to modify the configuration file. Do you remember which one it was? Um, in this case, the Debian theme uh, configuration file. So I'm going to do Alt F2, and I'm just going to select again GK Soda Gedit, and I'm going to go into the file system etc. Um, and I'm going to go into um, I'm do grub D, and here this five Debian theme is the one I, I want to open up and and edit. Lake underscore, and it was T G A, and just double check, make sure. It's got to be able to find the path. So user share images, and it was grub. User share images, grub. Okay, that should be good there. All right, so I'm going to save that file. And this will be sort of our custom image. But again, remember, whenever I do this, um, kind of like you know, you have to restart daemons whenever you modify config files for Samba or FTP or Apache. But in this case, I need to update grub. So. It's going to be sudo and update grub. And just to write those changes to my configuration files. And let's reboot and look at our spiffy new menu. And here's our beautiful, um, albeit now difficult to read, new grub2 boot menu with our background. So I'll just kind of let you spiffy things up if you so desire. Let's say I want to change my wallpaper again. That looks a little convoluted. I want to replace this file, the current splash image, with another splash image. Plasma-lamp.tga Okay, and then the other thing I want to change is, is my color scheme. Um, and I'm going to do a white text on a black background, and then for highlighting, I'm going to do red on white. Just to kind of maybe give that theme some contrast there. Remember, whenever you update a file, you have to update Grub. 
So let me zoom in here. And I'm just going to say sudo update grub and put in my password for root privileges. And it'll, again, it'll just take all those config files and sort of make file or compile them into the boot grub, you know, grub CFG file. And then now that I'm done, let's go look at my new splash screen. And here we have it. So here's my new grub splash screen. And again, on my triple boot system, here are my entries for Ubuntu and memory test. Here are my entries for Snow Leopard. And here's my entry for Windows 7. On my Toshiba satellite, my, my inexpensive Toshiba satellite laptop. 